Welcome to Recall Rush, your personal PYQ mock test series before the July FMG. Prepare yourself for a thrilling test session of biochemistry. Get ready to tackle a series of challenging questions and strengthen your knowledge for the big day. We would like to know how many questions you got right in the comments. Let's begin the intellectual adventure. Question 1. A 34-year-old male whose staple diet primarily consisted of only maize presents with diarrhea, dementia, and photosensitive dermatitis in sun-exposed areas. Which vitamin is most likely deficient in this patient? Here are the options. A. Niacin. B. Vitamin B6. C. Ascorbic acid. D. Biotin. And the correct option is A. Niacin. Here's the explanation. Now I'm going to tell you the causes of pellagra. What is pellagra? Pellagra is nothing but niacin deficiency and it is characterized by three Ds. What are the three Ds? Diarrhea, dermatitis and dementia. So what do you think are the causes of pellagra? The first cause would be niacin deficiency. So causes of pellagra will be niacin deficiency in the diet. Question 2. The lab technician notices a urine sample from a 4-year-old male that was normal on collection but turns into the color shown in the image after a few hours. It further darkened over the next few hours. Deficiency of which of the following can cause this condition? Here are the options. A. Beta carotene. B. Tyrosine aminotransferase. C. L-ascorbic acid. D. Homogentizic acid oxidase. And the correct option is D. Homogentizic acid oxidase. Here's the explanation. Homogentizic acid. So can you all tell me in which clinical condition is homogentesic acid found in urine? Yes, it is alkaptonuria. So I always say this, you cannot attend any competitive or clearance exam not learning about alkaptonuria because alkaptonuria is very common in India. Okay, so for now, that is uh, uh, towards the end of this session, I will be explaining in detail about alkaptonuria. But for now, which enzyme defect causes alkaptonuria? It is homogentisate oxidase defect. So think logically, when homogentisate oxidase is defective, what will accumulate in the circulation? Homogentisate or homogentisic acid will accumulate in the circulation. That will be reflected in urine. And because homogentisic acid is a reducing substance, it will answer Benedict's test. So alkapnuric patients' urine will answer Benedict's test. And this fact can be used in a beneficial way. Suppose a middle-aged person comes to you with multiple intervertebral disc bulges or prolapses, multiple joints involvement. The person says, I have knee pain, I have ankle pain, I have elbow pain. So multiple joints involvement. And on observation, you find pigmentation of pinna, pigmentation of tip of the nose. Thenar and hypothenar eminences are also pigmented. On enquiry, the person gives you a history of his or her urine turning dark on standing. You know, all these are clinical features of alkaptonuria. Question 3. Complex IV is inhibited by? Here are the options. A. Rho 10 1. B. Cyanide. C. Carboxin. D. Antimycin A. And the correct option is B. Cyanide. Here's the explanation. Electron transport between complex 4 and oxygen, between complex 4 and oxygen is inhibited by hydrogen sulfide, cyanide and carbon monoxide. All common poisons including hydrogen sulfide, cyanide and carbon monoxide. So if they ask you cyanide causes what kind of toxicity, what should be your answer? Cyanide inhibits electron transport between complex 4 and oxygen. So tissues will not be able to use oxygen and that is called as histotoxic hypoxia. What does cyanide cause? Cyanide causes histotoxic hypoxia wherein how much ever, however higher oxygen is available, your tissues will not be able to extract oxygen because electron transport chain is inhibited by cyanide. So cyanide causes histotoxic hypoxia. Question 4. Which of the following steps in the metabolism of vitamin D requires sunlight? Here are the options. A. 1. 25 dihydroxycholecalciferol to 7 dehydrocholesterol. B. 7 dehydrocholesterol to cholecalciferol. C. Cholecalciferol to 25 hydroxycholecalciferol. D. 25 hydroxycholecalciferol to 1. 25 dihydroxycholecalciferols. 
And the correct option is B7 dehydrocholesterol to cholecalcifal. Here's the explanation. So how was vitamin D synthesized? So this is one of the vitamins which can be endogenously synthesized. Like how you can convert tryptophan to niacin. Vitamin D can also be endogenously synthesized by the action of UV light. On 7 dehydrocholesterol which is present in the malphigian layer of skin epidermis. And this UV light opens up one of the rings of cholesterol and it converts 7 dehydrocholesterol into cholecalciferol. And your vitamin D that is endogenously synthesized is a derivative of cholecalciferol which is formed by opening one of the rings of cholesterol. Now, what are the conditions wherein galactose is found in urine? It can be galactosemia due to galactokinase deficiency or it can be classical galactosemia caused by the defect of galput. So, please remember this. This is asked very often. Classical galactosemia is caused by the defect of which enzyme? Galput. What is galput? Galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase. Yeah, galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase defect causes classical galactosemia. Question 6. Cholesterol is synthesized primarily from? Here are the options. A. Malonyl core. B. Pyruvate. C. Oxaloacetate. D. Acetyl core. And the correct option is D. Acetyl core. Here's the explanation. Von Gierke's disease is caused by the defect of glucose 6-phosphatase and when glucose 6-phosphatase is defective, the, pre the predominant presenting feature would be hypoglycemia. But apart from hypoglycemia, when there is glucose 6-phosphatase defect, because glucose 6-phosphate is not able to get converted to glucose, the accumulated glucose 6-phosphate will start getting into glycolysis. What will happen when gly glucose 6-phosphate gets into glycolysis? You get pyruvate. Now, what is the fate of this pyruvate? All these pyruvate would get converted to acetyl-CoA. And these acetyl-CoA molecules are building blocks of fatty acid and cholesterol. So, all acetyl-CoA will be used for fatty acid and cholesterol synthesis. Excess fatty acid will be stored as triacylglycerol and excess cholesterol will be stored as cholesterol ester. Question 7. The deficiency of vitamin B2, riboflavin, can be assessed by measuring the activity of? Here are the options. A. Transcritolase. B. Pyruvate dehydrogenase. C. Glutathione reductase. D. Isocitrate dehydrogenase. And the correct option is C. Glutathione reductase. Here's the explanation. So to make a diagnosis of riboflavin deficiency, we estimate something called as RBC glutathione reductase activity. For riboflavin deficiency, what should you estimate? It is RBC glutathione reductase activity. How to remember it? Will you agree with me if I say that ribbon and glue go hand in hand in artwork? This is ribbon. This is the glue gun. Right, ribbon and glue go hand in hand. So have this as a picture memory. Riboflavin deficiency, glutathione reductase activity has to be estimated in RBCs. Okay. Question 8. A 21-year-old alcoholic is brought to the emergency with confusion and tremors. On examination, there is ataxia and ophthalmoplegia. Deficiency of which of the following is responsible for the condition? Here are the options. A. Vitamin B12. B. Vitamin B9. C. Vitamin B1. D. Vitamin B3. And the correct option is C. Vitamin B1. Here's the explanation. Alcohol interferes with thiamine absorption. Alcohol interferes with magnesium absorption. Okay. And that is why a chronic alcoholic is susceptible to develop thiamine deficiency manifestations which can present itself either as Wernicke's encephalopathy or as Korsakoff syndrome. What is Wernicke's encephalopathy? This is acute thiamine deficiency. Korsakoff syndrome is chronic thiamine deficiency. 
an acute thiamine deficiency will present itself as GOVA. So what does GOVA stand for? G stands for global confusion. O stands for ophthalmoplegia and A stands for ataxia. So what are the three manifestations of acute thiamine deficiency of Wernicke's encephalopathy? Global confusion, ophthalmoplegia and ataxia. Question 9. The enzyme deficient in von Jerker's disease is? Here are the options. A. Liver phosphorylase. B. Lysosomal glucosidase. C. Hepatic glycogen synthase. D. Glucose 6-phosphatase. And the correct option is D. Glucose 6-phosphatase. Here's the explanation. But what is that you observe here? Glucose 6-phosphatase is not only an enzyme of gluconeogenesis. It's also an enzyme that is necessary for glycogenolysis to increase blood glucose. That is why, tell me what will happen when there is glucose 6-phosphatase defect, which we call as von Gierke's disease, which is a favorite topic of NEPG. So whenever there is a defect of glucose 6-phosphatase, whenever it is von Gierke's disease, both glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis cannot increase blood glucose and that causes severe hypoglycemia. Question 10. Maple syrup urine disease is due to defect in which enzyme? Here are the options. A. Branched chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase. B. Isovaleral core dehydrogenase. C. Pyruvate carboxylase. D. Acetyl core carboxylase. And the correct option is A. Branched chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase. Here's the explanation. The fifth one is branch chain keto acid dehydrogenase of branch chain amino acid metabolism. The defect of which causes maple syrup urine disease. Question 11. Nitrogenous waste is excreted from the body in the form of? Here are the options. A. Urea. B. Nitric oxide, C. Ammonia, D. Glutamine, and the correct option is A. Urea. Here's the explanation. For those of you who don't remember this, urea cycle is a process by which you convert ammonia to urea which gets excreted in urine. Okay, so what is the formula for urea? The formula for urea is C double bond O NH2 NH2. Do you understand this? The formula for urea C double bond O NH2 NH2. And for you to say that urea is the best non-toxic form of ammonia, you should be able to say that both N1 and N2 of urea are from ammonia. Question 12. In a 13-year-old with acute flaccid paralysis, the pediatrics resident orders an RT-PCR on a CSF sample to identify the causative virus. Which of the following described the enzyme correctly? Here are the options. A. DNA-dependent RNA polymerase. B. RNA-dependent DNA polymerase. C. DNA-dependent DNA polymerase. D. RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. And the correct option is B. RNA-dependent DNA polymerase. Here's the explanation. What is transcription? DNA to RNA is transcription. So what is reverse transcription? RNA to DNA is reverse transcription. When I say telomerase is a reverse transcriptase, I mean to say it is an RNA dependent DNA polymerase. Question 13. A child with mental retardation, blindness and muscle weakness was investigated and was found to be deficient for hexosaminidase A enzyme. She is most likely suffering from here are the options. A. Crabbe's disease. B. Fabry's disease. C. Tay-Sachs disease. D. Gotcher's disease. And the correct option is C. Tay-Sachs disease. Here's the explanation. Hexosaminidase A gene mutation causes Tay-Sachs. Tay-Sachs is caused by the defect of or the mutation of hexosaminidase A gene. Question 14. Which of the following is a copper-containing enzyme? Here are the options. A. Mitochondrial superoxide dismutase. B. Cytosolic superoxide dismutase. C. Tyrosinase. D. Lysol oxidase. And the correct option is C. Tyrosinase. Here's the explanation. This most of the minerals. Example is magnesium which is present in kinases. Copper which is present in superoxide dismutase. A copper which is present in tyrosinase. Yeah? 
zinc which is present in carbonic anhydrase in all these places you cannot detach these non protein parts from the protein part so most of the minerals also belong to prosthetic groups question 15 a 45 year old man who was a chronic alcoholic presented with confusion ataxia and diplopia what is the treatment protocol here are the options a vitamin b1 injection followed by glucose infusion b glucose infusion followed thiamine injection c glucose infusion alone d thiamine infusion alone and the correct option is a vitamin b1 injection followed by glucose infusion here's the explanation so tell me what is one of the causes of wernick's encephalopathy in a chronic alcoholic treating hypoglycemia directly with dextrose infusion what should be done to avoid wernick's encephalopathy in a chronic alcoholic if the person happens to be hypoglycemic before you start dextrose infusion get a personal history if you get to know that the person is a chronic alcoholic give him or her thiamine injection first yeah give him or her thiamine injection first and then start dextrose infusion only then you can avoid wernick's encephalopathy do you understand this so this is one of the causes of wernick's encephalopathy a chronic alcoholic's hypoglycemia being treated with a dextrose infusion without thiamine injection question 16 which gag is found in synovial fluid here are the options a heparin only intracellular gag and act as anticoagulant b keratin sulfate cornea of eye c chondroitin sulfate most abundant gag in the body cartilage bone tendon D. Hyaluronic acid connective tissue, synovial fluid and vitreous humor. And the correct option is D. Hyaluronic acid connective tissue, synovial fluid and vitreous humor. Here's the explanation. Now it's time that we learn about location of all these mucopolysaccharides. Yeah, because that is being frequently asked. So I'm going to fill up this tabular column. And at the end you will know about location of all the seven mucopolysaccharides. So the first mucopolysaccharide about which you will have to know is, let me use this color, yeah. So the first mucopolysaccharide is hyaluronic acid. So tell me where is hyaluronic acid present? It is present in synovium. This has been asked so many times. Where is uh, hyaluronic acid present? It is present in synovium and in vitreous. Question 17. Which of the following mineral is associated with carbonic anhydrase? Here are the options. A zinc b iron c calcium d potassium and the correct option is a zinc here's the explanation this most of the minerals example is magnesium which is present in kinases copper which is present in superoxide dismutase a copper which is present in tyrosinase yeah zinc which is present in carbonic anhydrase in all these places, you cannot detach these non-protein parts from the protein part. So, most of the minerals also belong to prosthetic groups. Question 18. Which gag has anticoagulant activity? Here are the options. A. Heparin. B. Keratin sulfate. C. Chondroitin sulfate. D. Hyaluronic acid. And the correct option is A. Heparin. Here's the explanation. How about heparin? I hope you all know that heparin is a natural anticoagulant that is secreted by mast cells. So heparin is secreted by mast cells. Question 19. Enolase is inhibited by which of the following substances? Here are the options. A. Fluoride. B. Fluoroacetate. C. Iodoacetate. D. Potassium oxalate. And the correct option is A. Fluoride. Here's the explanation. And then the popular enzyme and the popular inhibitor, enolase, which removes water. Yeah, enolase of glycolysis, which removes water and forms phosphoenol pyruvate, is inhibited by fluoride. Enolase is inhibited by fluoride. And that is why we use a combination of sodium fluoride and potassium oxalate for plasma glucose estimation. So if they ask you which is the anticoagulant of choice for plasma glucose estimation, what will be your answer? It's a combination of sodium fluoride and potassium oxalate and it comes in a grey topped tube. So if you're collecting blood sample for fasting plasma glucose estimation or postprandial plasma glucose estimation, 
try to find out a great talk tube which has got fluoride and that can be used for this purpose. Question 20. After strenuous exercise, alkaline pH of skeletal muscle is in which glycogen storage disease. Here are the options. A. M. C. Ardell's disease. B. Von Jaeger's disease. C. Hers disease. D. Pomp's disease. And the correct option is A. M. C. Ardell's disease. Here's the explanation. Type 5 of McArdle's muscle phosphorylase is defective. When muscle glycogenolysis is defective, muscle will not get glucose. Will muscle be able to get plasma glucose? When it is anaerobic exercise or when it is isometric exercise, when the tone of the muscle increases, all blood vessels get constricted in the muscle. So the muscle will not be able to get a fresh supply of glucose. Glycogen is also not providing glucose. Without glucose, no anaerobic glycolysis. So what will it present as? It will present as exercise intolerance. Exercise intolerance, intolerance particularly to anaerobic exercises. When if you ask the person to perform some anaerobic exercises, initially they will be able to do it. After which they will present with painful muscle cramps. Yeah, That will be the presenting feature of McArdle's. So, exercise intolerance, intolerance particularly to anaerobic exercises. Question 21. Urea cycle occurs in? Here are the options. A. Mitochondria. B. Cytoplasm. C. Both. D. None. And the correct option is C. Both. Here's the explanation. So, urea cycle steps. Where does urea cycle happen? Does urea cycle happen in cytoplasm or in mitochondria or in nucleus or in endoplasmic reticulum? Where do you think in which suborganal? Organ we know. Organ is liver. Within liver, in which suborganal do you think urea cycle happens? Yes, urea cycle partly happens in mitochondria, partly in cytoplasm. To be very precise, the first two steps of urea cycle happen in mitochondria. The remaining steps happen in cytoplasm. Question 22. Which is the branching enzyme? Here are the options. A. Glycogen synthase. B. Glucose 6-phosphatase. C. Alpha 1,4,1,6-glucan transferase. D. Glycogen phosphorylase. And the correct option is C. Alpha 1,4,1,6-glucan transferase. Here's the explanation. So what is the other name for branching enzyme? Branching enzyme cleaves alpha 1,4 linkage and it forms alpha 1,6 linkage. So branching enzyme is otherwise called as alpha 1,4 to alpha 1,6 glucan transferase. We are thrilled to have you on this learning journey. Tomorrow, we continue unraveling the crucial topics of FMT for FMGE. We are curious to know if you find this series helpful. A like would be a clear sign. Together, let's foster a community of knowledge seekers.